Holy crap, that's a blue. Hold on, hold on. Oh man, this is a Florida blue bark centipede. I've seen three of these in my lifetime, this being the third. My name is Spencer and welcome to Can I Catch It? Today, we're looking for the Florida Bark Centipede, one of my favorite little creepy crawlies to come across while exploring. So why is this centipede such a big deal? Well, first and foremost, these guys are actually super rare. Now, I'd be lying if I said this catch is gonna be easy. So, I've only ever seen two of these animals in the wild. The Eastern Bark Centipede, or Florida Bark Centipede, is the largest centipede in the East Coast. And the fact that it's blue makes it all the more special. See, nature is actually not very good at making things that are blue. In fact, very few things actually have blue pigment in nature. And in the case of this centipede, its exoskeleton actually refracts and bends light, which makes it appear blue, but this centipede is not actually blue. Yeah, of all the animals that I decided to track down for this season, this one is gonna be the hardest. But uh, the weirdest part about this catch is, not only is it one of the weirdest things we're gonna see this season, but it's actually gonna be fairly close to the house. My search actually takes me to my front yard. See, out here we've got lots of bricks, pots, and other sorts of debris that various creatures like to hide under. And what's more, you're actually more likely to find one of these eastern bark centipedes closer to a dwelling than out in the woods. Like I said before, all of my previous encounters were accidental and very close to the house. So if I'm gonna find one of these insane looking centipedes, my best shot is underneath a brick right in the front yard. I spent quite some time flipping, but like I said, these centipedes are super, super rare. So I wasn't surprised that my search wasn't very fruitful. In fact, I pretty much abandoned looking for this creature for this season because I decided that finding one of these centipedes intentionally was going to be dang near impossible. But my luck changed when I was going out into the woods to film a segment for a completely different video. So this whole area I was raking, um, cause apparently if you have stuff raked away from the trees, it's a better chance of finding snakes. Um, so far this place hasn't yielded any snakes, but um, I'm actually gonna look in the bark further out from there where it's been disturbed and see if anything has taken refuge underneath. The bark holds in a lot of moisture and it also blocks out the sun. It's not quite as strong as like a full log or a rock, um, but you will get some really unique stuff living under bark. So I think, let's go ahead and start here. Uh, nothing there. Oh, a lot of ants, that's no good. Never a good sign if you have a lot of ants. Uh, let's move further away from there. Let's see if I hear anything. Millipedes. Holy crap! That's a blue! Hold on, hold on. I didn't think I was gonna find one of these. I wasn't even, oh man, hold on. Come here, you, come here, you. No, 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 don't escape, don't escape, don't escape. Get in there. This is a Florida blue bark centipede. I've seen, I've seen three of these in my lifetime, this being my, this being the third. I've been meaning to film one of these guys, but I have, you can't find them anywhere. I, I never find them on purpose. I'm like, you, you can see that I'm shaking. Oh my God, that is a blue centipede. Against all odds, here it is, the Eastern Bark Centipede. I'm gonna avoid free handling this creature for two reasons. One, centipedes are actually incredibly delicate. Most people think of amphibians when they think of creatures that'll dry out if they're handled too long. But one of the reasons that centipedes spend so much time underneath debris is they will actually dry up to a crisp if they're out in open air for too long. 
The other reason is, these guys are super finicky, super flighty, and one wrong move could incite this creature to bite. Centipede bites are incredibly painful, even if they're not dangerous, and honestly, this creature is going to be under a lot less stress if it's crawling around on this stick instead of being in my open hand. The Eastern Bark Centipede is a magnificent killing machine. Despite being found often inside houses, this creature's territory is the forest floor. Like a swift, venomous locomotive, it powers across the rough terrain using those gorgeously blue antenna to scan for chemical trails of potential prey items. Creatures like this bristletail may very well be on the menu. And if the eastern bark centipede picks up their trail in the dead of night, you can guarantee their lifespan is not going to be very long. As formidable as this creature is, it's an important part of the local ecosystem, and just like any centipede, should be respected and admired from a distance. I am in disbelief that I was able to find such a brilliant individual for you, and I'm so glad I was able to share all of these incredible catches in this season two of Can I Catch It? I want to thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy incredible creepy crawly encounters in your backyard, check out the playlist on your screen. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.